All right, this video is one of the most historic conversations that we've had out of the 218 podcast episodes here on Trail Cam Radio. And it is the backstory of the Huff Buck. So the Huff Buck is the biggest typical buck that has ever been shot in the United States. It got shot on November 4th. We recapped this hunt from what we could gather from reading online. And one interesting fact was that this deer had a range or documented range of eight miles. If luck would have it, the folks that had this deer on camera reached out, Brad and Tim. We have a conversation with them. They share three years history with this buck. So they purchased a farm and the first card pull had this giant three-year-old with a goofed up one side and he showed up late season. Following year, showed up again late season. When he was five years old, presumably, showed up again late season. And then as history would have it, at six years old, he ended up netting 211 inches and ranks the number one typical in the United States and number two all time behind the Milo Hansen Bucks. We hope you guys enjoy it. You get to hear the full story. You get to check out all these videos that we're discussing here. He's got a giant bump on his head when he was five years old. They think that might have something to do with his kind of strange behavior. But regardless, if you want to know the story of the biggest typical that's ever been shot in the United States, you get to hear their perspective here. So let's get right into it. Lights, camera, follow the trail. I'm ready to shoot. If you know where a deer's bedding and you know where he's eating, that deer should be dead. Camera. If you're passive on a deer, what you're doing is you're teaching. I've got 30 bucks in the Michigan record book. Everyone but one has had at least one previous wound on his body. Some had as many as four. <laughs> trail Cam Radio from the guys at Exodus. All right, we are live. And uh, this almost feels like a breaking news story of some sort, or uh, or I'm doing some some journalism with a capital J right here. So we have Brad and Tim here, and just want to say thanks for you guys for hopping on here. We just last week talked about how basically the biggest typical ever shot in the United States kind of flew under the radar in terms of the hunting news or media, whatever you want to call it. I was just reading the stories, and one of the things that was very interesting was how far this deer traveled, and. Uh, you guys had pictures of this deer. You guys were those folks in that story. So I'll let you guys uh, introduce yourself however you want to. And I'm excited for this. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, I'm Brad. I like to hunt big deer. And uh, <laughs> we happen to not be able to kill a big deer. <laughs> I kill. I'm Tim. I like to kill big deer. Don't do it very often. But um, yeah, I mean, we picked up this particular property in 2018, like late November. So really after the gun season had started and went to check cameras real late season it had this phenomenal looking three-year-old on camera and that kind of like kicked off the story of this deer you know everybody names their deer we called this one megatime junior um just because of his potential and he was already really heavy heavy mass tall times just a really pretty looking deer he had broken off one side but we could tell he was uh he had big potential and mm-hmm. um kind of like kicked kicked our saga of Megatime Jr. off, really. Mm-hmm. Now, not to, uh, so with the name Jr., it almost feels like there must have been a senior. <laughs> so so maybe, it, who was who uh, Megatine Sr.? So uh, Megatine Sr. was a, a, a buck that had a very, very similar frame that we killed. It was, a, um, I think at the time, it was the number three archery typical in the state. And, and they look a lot alike. They look so. And what year was that again? Sorry, thirteen. Two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys bought this farm, this deer that looked very similar to another deer of, that you were somewhat familiar with in the area, and it showed up. So that was was that some of the one of the first card poles you ever had on that farm? It may have been the very first. And wow. I remember driving down the road and a bunch of two and your typical pretty 120 inch deer 130 inch deer around there and then this one pops up and brad's driving and i'm like we got a real one you know here's a good one <laughs> and um he's trying to look at it as he's driving and that was like the first hard pull we had in late january early february mm-hmm. wow and then he had showed up after season that mm-hmm. season too so it wasn't like we had a chance at him but he was there, you know, he was in the neighborhood. Yeah. As you pull that card and you bought that farm, you're thinking, oh man, this deer is going to be a slammer when he's four. And you're hoping that he shows up. And just, for, just so people are following, I want to make sure it's clear. This was, this is the, the huff buck. Now we'll, we can call it, we can call it junior. We can call it the huff buck, whatever you want to. Yeah. And so that was that deer at three first carpool likely. And then, so you're thinking that four years old, 
gosh, he's going to be a slammer. Did you did you get any velvet pictures or anything of him? Nothing. And that was the you didn't know what we had at the time. You know, we were anticipating this deer going to be over the farm. We're going to see him. We're going to know where he lives. He might not be right on us, but he's got to be close. Um, you know, whether or not we're scouting with the binos, whatever it is, we're going to find him. Mm-hmm. You know, that next year, and never did. Wow. So. <laughs> and then it's so at this point at four years old let's say before he shows back up are you hearing any because at four years old he's super impressive still did you were you hearing any rumors or anything or i guess what was the local chatter there wasn't really anything i mean we didn't hear about him. nobody that we know of killed a big one i think one guy that year said he missed a nice 10 pointer or something mm-hmm and so you make it through both gun seasons. We never saw him during the rut. Thought he was gone. And then Merry Christmas. <laughs> but Christmas again, he showed up. Was it, I can't remember if it was after the season, last weekend. As a four-year-old, he showed up in, in January again, right after the season. Mm-hmm. But again, you're like, hey, he's alive. You know, you're ecstatic. Yeah. He, he goes from a 160 to in the upper 70s 80s as a typical which just on on a trail camera pick and we actually have video of them mm-hmm. just looks like he's bigger than the world you know yeah it's just we're we're celebrating because he's still alive we still got a chance you know man what a this is the sixth story that a lot of deer hunters have been in when you, you think you're like oh, I'm, I'm all right he's back four years old <laughs> he's a lot bigger and you're trying to you're trying to put all this together to think like oh, i'm gonna put a plan and kill that son of a gun and then so let's fast forward at, so he sticks around for how long do you think a four years old that he stick around from yeah, you know, he, he till he shed? He left like after like he was in there like I said about a month. And okay. That's hard to tell because they all shed. You know, you have yeah. an idea, but they all shed it. Um, and then he was out there probably mid late February. Okay, and then so now he's you know borderline. I mean, he's floating a Boone and Crockett. So that's obviously mm-hmm. a, another layer of excitement. And then, so same thing, obviously, any Velva pictures or anything like that the following year? No, nothing. Nothing. And this is kind of like where things got fun for us was last year. Mm -hmm. It got really interesting, you know, no pictures. You kind of put them in the back of your head. You hope he's still alive. Is there a chance somebody can bump him in, push him into you? Sure. You know, during gun, maybe a little bit early so you have a chance. And it filled my tag. Mm-hmm. And so we're sitting there, and it was Christmas night. Bam, he shows up on the property, and he daylights in 2020. And so Brad and I are instantly texting. We yep. gotta go. We mm-hmm. gotta go. And we were in the home a couple of times on the farm after he daylighted. Never saw him, um, but it got real for us, you know, at that point in time. Were we really in the game? We don't know. Mm-hmm. We might even think we were. Um, but we went after him and had a legit shot last last Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. did you only had what do we have five days left in this season to hunt him? Yeah, you have was. to. Yeah, he yeah. showed up, he's there. And so did yeah. you get a cell camera picture of him first or was it did you okay? Cell so, camera pick that showed him um, and it was five thirty six. So it was you know, right before daylight, but he's killable. You know? Yeah. Of course, of course, Christmas was the best weather day. Yeah. You know, late season with cold front moving through super high pressure. Mm-hmm. And yeah, not allowed family. Family wouldn't let you go. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Are you, were you getting him on? I were, Did you have any cameras on scrapes or anything? Well, did you have him doing scrape activity or was it just, do you think he was just there yep. for seclusion? He was just there for seclusion. It's a uh-huh. big, it's a big bedding area uh, around it's super mature oak flats and it's a river bottom with mm-hmm. just a bunch of bedding area. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So then obviously nothing turned up and how big do you think he was then? We had, um, 195 gross in them is what we were estimating. So just a stellar deer in five by five frame then. He's a six by five, six by, six by five that year. Yeah. yeah so that would have so, brought down his typical score. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would have. And so, okay. What about local chatter then? Was there now that there's a one ninety five running? Well, we know, 
a couple guys sent us some pictures uh-huh. and they were like, ah, just some neighbors, you know, mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, nice 10 pointer came through or a big 10 pointer came through. Have you seen them? No. Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe. Could be the same deer. Maybe not. So yeah. that was them. That was them asking you guys, like if you knew of a, a so, so were those guys kind of relaxed, I guess, is not realizing what the caliber of the deer was? Yeah, they they sent the picture. And I think their quote was, and we, we share pictures with mm-hmm. everybody yep. around there. But, you know, some people don't necessarily realize what they have. Or maybe they're just a very good poker face. <laughs> and eh, just a nice 10. Uh, yeah, 195 inch. <laughs> Pretty nice. Run of the mill there. Some, you find one of those every year. Some of the some of the cameras aren't that great. So sure. they look a little blurry. They're shooting down from on yeah. top of them. They're it can not be the deceiving. Pictures. Yeah. It can it really can be deceiving. So so let me ask you this from even from year to year, were you guys trying to what was your plan and thinking of like how are we gonna kill him? Knowing my that he's plan, gonna show up late season. My plan was to have Tim yeah, use his tag that. early. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just let it rest till the late season, go in there and kill it. You got That's a good hunting buddy there. <laughs> uh, you got to understand, I can be a little trigger happy. Okay. So, you know, it doesn't take much for me. Matt, Brad is a little more disciplined than myself. But, um, yeah, I mean, it it never really came to fruition the first couple of years because throughout the course of the entire year, we weren't getting him at all. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were guessing where he might live. Um, you know, north, south, like we had all these, we were looking at plot maps, like where could yeah. this deer possibly be? We never get them until the end. So you never felt like we were really in the game, you know, to hunt them during a rut or something. You were hoping, you know, in mm-hmm. the back of your head, you can't be that far. But I don't know if we really had like a game plan to kill him. There were some other big deer that were way more visible that were more probably like realistic targets. You got to kill what's there um, mm-hmm. with the hope. I mean, to kill a deer this big, you, you got to be lucky, you know? It, yeah. Dustin is proof of that, right? Um, and, you know, I mean, you just got to be in the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. Almost sometimes, no matter how, how best you game plan. Yeah, that's that's the crapshoot of deer hunting, unfortunately. That's just the, the pure reality. Now, I guess, so w- does this farm hold some big deer throughout the season in October, November? Or, okay. So it's yeah. it's a good farm year round, but for whatever reason, this deer really preferred it around that Christmas time. It's a like it's a rut spot, and it's a good late season spot. So, mm-hmm. so thick, so there's bucks will take their does in there to breed them. Different bucks, so there'll be a different buck in there with a doe for three, four days at a time, and mm-hmm. it's a little pass through. But there's some great potential, but it's Indiana, so. It's a rifle season during yeah. the rut, and all the great potential three or four year olds get blasted. Yeah, so. that that's that seems to be a theme across the the entire country. But I didn't I didn't quite honestly I I never bought an Indiana tag, so I've never really realized how liberal that gun season is. And quite frankly, here in Illinois with a slug gun, it's not nearly equivalent to a rifle. <laughs> so oh, <yeah. laughs> um, that definitely adds another layer to to the effectiveness of other hunters. So at, at this point, you know, I guess we're, we're already to this past season. He's 195. You have three years of history. Now you're thinking, gosh, because I, I cannot imagine on your guys's perspective of, you don't even know what he looks like year to year. And you're just hoping and praying that he shows up in December. And he, yeah, he really. went from like 150 something to 175, 180, and then 195 or whatever. And then you're yeah. like, is he going to be 200 inches with the typical frame? Which is, that's the Holy grail. If I mean, that's, that's the Holy grail period. No we, argument about it. We looked at pictures and we probably did more effort not to put him at 200 because you hate to <laughs> jinx yourself. You know, yeah. you're like, nah, you can't quite get there. You know, he's not going to get to 200. Yeah. And he was probably sniffing it all day. No, he's low nineties, you know, yeah. really projected you're that big through a trail camera picture, but we mm-hmm. knew he was a guy. You know, and, well, yeah, and that video too, it looked like he was adding some ass then. And then it from obviously from this that year to the year he got killed this past season, the amount of mass that he added. And I do you guys know is there is the official score sheet out yet to know how much actual mass measurement there is? Oh I haven't seen it. 
I saw the unofficial, Mm -hmm. but it's going to be, and that was by a real score. Okay. It's going to be right at it. So I have a copy of that somewhere. Yeah. I'd be really curious to know. I I can get that over to you. Yeah. yeah, It's it's crazy mass all the way through it. Yeah. Upper sixes. I want to say it had five, if not six, uh, mass measurements of six inches or more. Yeah, I mean it's fifty-five inches of mass, probably something like that. Like, which yeah. is 50, like it's north of fifty. Like it's just yeah. unheard of, and it looks cartoonish. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as I was mentioning to you earlier. Yeah, uh, you know, we're at that point in the season this past year when you find out he's killed. Actually, a farmer friend of mine uh-huh. sends me a picture that we have some permission farms in the area, and he sends me a picture of like two or three really big deer that got killed, and one of them was the hot buck. Yeah. I instantly saw it and it's his telltale sign on his left brow tie because it was the same little kicker point on it every mm-hmm. year and you just knew and how many deer are that big and frame me and I send the picture to Brad and I'm like he's dead like he's gone you know Gosh. and uh and and instantly it's like, like the guy that we're close to our neighbor like hey do you know this local guy and he's like yep what's his name he tells me his name I look him up on Facebook and what a great dude yeah, Justin Huff's a good guy, and uh, he was like, "Come on over to the house, check him out." I shared all the videos and history I had with him. Uh huh. Um, just a humble, humble cat, man. Really yeah. good dude, and um, you know, a good dude to shoot a deer like that. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, he's like one of the guys. You're like, you have the neighbors and stuff. You're like, gosh, I hope that guy doesn't kill him. <laughs> but this guy, you meet him, and you're like shit i'm glad he killed him yeah not <laughs> glad to be anybody so, yeah someone not like pompous or anything else like that exactly yeah no nope. nope. like he, zero ego yeah like over the top humble so he, like he might come off like yeah i'm real lucky but he's a killer well and that's i kind of gathered that from looking at his facebook and i was going back because i mean I, anyone that was trying to figure it out. I was like, well, he has a lot of grip and grins is all I have to say with some really nice deer. This isn't a one trick pony here. So, um, obviously the story is what any rut hunter would dream of, of going into a spot and having a giant deer show up. I mean, that's, we've all, I guarantee we've all been frustrated at the rut and we're like, all right, nothing's working. Uh, I'm going to just go somewhere new and it worked out for him. Is that, so I guess, let me back up this year a little bit. You guys don't know what he is this past year until he's killed no word or photos yep nothing nobody talked nobody said a word uh-huh. which is awfully surprising for a deer that big you know you yeah. think that somebody at some point in time and we're connected to enough you know outdoorsmen and hunters that you think somebody would share like oh, at, at a bar with a beer like hey check yep. this one out you know and be like hey i know him too none of that ever happened it wow. was all um you know it's you know we, we as hunters can uh, sometimes be a little fickle when it comes to that stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Keep it, and so, keep it close to chest, you know? Well, a deer like that, especially now, um, one question I have is obviously that one, one of the videos you shared was he was holding one side and the other one. So do we know who found those sheds or are we going to see that in <laughs> the shed That's black market? <laughs> I, w- I wish it was us. I mean, when we, yeah. when we, we were shed hunting when we pulled that one and, you know, and I, I was like, Brad, he's, he's here, you know? And then, and then it's like, oh, he shed on us. And we had multiple groups come out. We were doing circles. Mm-hmm. You know, the unfortunate thing, right or wrong, it's the dead of winter. You're not always on your farms. We're, we're a little bit, we live a little bit of distance from our sure. farm. Full trail cameras. And there's some people when their own antler digging themselves. So we don't know who found it. Somebody has it somewhere. Because um, mm-hmm. it was, you know it'd be hard one to miss but we look and we went yeah. hard at it but never found of it. of course yeah. yeah and i had to be pretty dang close based off of oh. the sequence of camera photos or videos yes. you had oh i found the square sheet so it's like yeah four mast measurements over six inch and then the other four or five and a half wow what were the beams uh the beams were 28 and a half and 27 and some change but okay. everything's like the the left and right are like the exact same. Yeah. Every yeah. measurement's almost the exact same. Yeah. The crazy, crazy thing is the thing that distinguished him is what probably kept them from breaking the Milo Hansen record. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. You know? And it was every year that was like the distinguishing mark. 
Yeah. Gosh. So you guys don't know anything of this deer. You're the, there's no local chatter per se that at least that you guys figured out. And then it's, uh, you know, the beginning of November. So were you guys hunting your farms already or were you guys working that day or what did that look like? Yeah, I was on rotation, you know, I take that first week of November off. So I was in a tree. Everybody was in a Everybody tree. Everybody was in a tree. We got mm-hmm. a group of four of us, five of us that kind of hunt pretty, pretty darn hard. Uh, mm-hmm. We have, we have multiple properties in that area, in that neighborhood. And so we were all going at it hard, gung ho. And then, bang, that text comes through from a friend mm-hmm. and you know he's dead. And you're kind of like, we call it deer pression. We went into a yeah. little bit of deer pression at the time, you know? Yeah. Heart sinks. Heart sinks. <laughs> yeah. Pit in your you stomach. <laughs> It was, you know, we, like I said, we never thought we were truly in the game because we didn't see him during the summer. We didn't see him during the fall. Yep. But you always have it in the back of your head. And, oh, yeah. But also part of it is to see the story come to an end is mm-hmm. pretty cool, too, especially now that we know that he's the U.S. number one typical world number two. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to have been a part of that in some small little weird way because, because of some pictures of him on your property. It's just a yeah. cool story, you know? It's super, it's a super cool thing. And yeah. it's such, when you break down that it is the biggest typical ever shot in the United States, that is incredible. And I, I felt like, I just cannot believe it didn't go more viral than, than what it did. And maybe, maybe you guys have an opinion on this. Would you say that it was drastically underrated going into really just even a couple of weeks or a week ago when it was officially announced? Brad probably has a take on this. You know, Brad does some more social stuff posting some of our deer. Mm-hmm. He posted that deer a half dozen times, you know, when mm-hmm. he was a three year old, when he was a four year old, when he was a five year old, like posting some small pictures. And granted, it's a small base, but a deer of that caliber, you're kind of like, you think that it would pick up traction or somebody would yeah. be like, hey, this is the real deal. And yeah. it never did. Yeah. It never did. You know, there's, there's always some people that know what they're looking at, but. I don't well, think many people can tell the difference between a 180 typical and a apparently a 211. Yeah. No, I, I there are some people. There's some people that are like, "Yep, that's over yeah. 200 inch typical. It's a phenomenal animal." But yeah. the average average guy that looks at a big deer, and they say that's a big deer is all they say, and they don't put more than two much. seconds of thought. That's why I mean, uh, a little off topic. That's why if if I ever have a picture of a giant deer. Part of the reason I don't want to show because I'm super excited about it. And then I show it to you and you're like, oh, yeah, pretty nice deer. It's like, well, no, it's not just a pretty nice deer. Yeah. <laughs> we go off on a tangent here a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you realize how special this deer is? Like, yeah. that's what you want to say, right? Yeah, exactly. I was yeah. like, yeah. So that's one reason I think uh, maybe that's why people hold their cards tight because it's like, I guarantee you guys thought about that deer very often and then to show yeah. someone they're like oh yeah man about 160 170 you know? what is that what is that 12 point is that exactly point? <laughs> yep. yeah 12. It's a, it's yeah an okay it's an okay 12 that's that's crazy so um break down so you get the you get the news officially and then november so this deer was shot the fourth correct and then you guys went and saw it with your own eyeballs on the seventh yeah i did okay. um brad and kind of team we're, we're still hunting i went and saw them and then we actually went back because i have family members that come down uh who hunt this farm with us and so we came down and actually went back out to, like i think it was the second night of gun season or something he he got the deer back and so we went and, and brad saw for the first time then and we had some buddies in town from tennessee so everybody's mm-hmm. coming into town to hunt we yep. all made it a party and went saw that's cool yeah. yeah what was it like seeing that deer for the first i mean because you had the pictures of him you, at that point you saw a picture of him when he was dead but let me ask this is the question i want to ask so when you saw him dead were you like holy cow that's he did make another giant jump yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it so, so i always we, whenever we, we have like a big deer, deer it's always like i hope one of us kills it but at least i hope a poacher doesn't get it because we've had right. that happen too yeah i hope we get to put our hands on it and actually yeah. see that deer when yeah. it's when it's one like that so mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my mentality. Every time we see one of those big ones, I'd love to put my hands on it. Hopefully one of us get it, but mm-hmm. ultimately hope it does, a poacher doesn't get it. Hopefully we get to see it. Somebody shoots it legally. Someone ethically. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, absolutely. And that's, that's kind of how this one was. You get to go see it. And mm-hmm. It's, it's phenomenal. So phenomenal specimen. Yeah. And so this is the most interesting part of the story is that this deer was killed roughly 
eight miles as the crow flies, not road miles, crow flies. So yeah. that might include areas where the deer's not going to travel or he's going to have to hook around. So it easily could be more than eight miles, I would assume. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So there's big, big open ag ground, a mm-hmm. couple creek bottoms. I think I looked at it one time. He would have had to cross eight paved roads to get to us or from us to get to him. Wow. So, and then, so in terms, did you hear the chatter in terms of where the deer was actually killed or from where Dustin shot it of what was, what was going on there locally? Cause I read in the one story, the guy got up, was waiting for him to show up and then he went in there after him. What's the scoop there? local chatter just after he got killed and it was he got killed over here and got killed over here uh, you know uh and you know and my neighbor buddy he was like hey um we we're talking about the deer and he's like he's like hey do you know where he was killed and i said no i'd love to know and he's like hey well you know the baptist church you go one quarter mile up the county road this and he's like you go two sixties over he was killed on that 60 uh-huh. and you're like okay that's like three and a half miles from where we're at that's believable uh, yeah. i get it and then you meet the guy and he goes, he's eight miles away. And he says he killed it three quarters of a mile north of where he lived. And you're like, okay. And that's dang near nine miles from where we were at. And so the stories of a deer like that, just, you know, everybody wants to be in the know on where it was killed and who yeah. killed it and when and all that stuff. So there was a lot of circumstance with that. But mm-hmm. you no, know, I, I had a chance to see some pictures of him, you know, through Dustin that first night of, I think there was, one other guy that showed up before I did to show him some trail cam pictures of the deer. And, you know, this is more of the legend. He shot him three quarters of a mile from his house, which is eight and a half miles from us. But that guy had that deer on camera even further north than that, which would have put him even further from our farm. So, you know, and there's no reason not to believe it. It's just hard to fathom. Yeah, that a, deer could, that a deer could travel that far. You know, it yeah. just makes you question everything. You know, it does. Uh, of of how you hold deer, can you hold deer? <laughs> yeah. What made what made that animal go? You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody always says big deer don't travel. They don't travel. The older they yeah. get, the smaller their core <laughs> area gets. Yeah. Big, and, biggest typical in the U.S. just traveled nine miles and got himself killed. You know. Yeah, and also sure. flew under the radar for the most part too. Yeah. yeah. Which, for sure. yeah, yeah, that's, I, I totally believe it. It is hard to like fully comprehend. And I think anyone listening should pull out their onyx and go look at their farm and then go put nine miles in every direction and be like, holy cow. Um, yeah. in terms of, yeah. And like you said, everyone wants to manage to hold deer and feed the deer year round or whatever the case may be. They do whatever they want. It's pretty clear. It's, wild. <laughs> it's a wild animal, man. Yep. One one girlfriend can, can take him <laughs> on, a, on a wild ride. Yeah. Gosh. Okay. And then so out of curiosity, I mean, what is and this is so there's been some big typicals in killed, obviously, consistently. This was the this deer was named Junior. Well, that's actually that's another really interesting thing too, when you think about it, was this deer was a junior and it's still eight, nine miles away from where he was killed. So you, you guys must have, because uh, they say the does carry the majority of the genetics, so you must have a really good pool of does there that have this immaculate gene. Can only something. assume? Something. There's something. Yeah. We feel we're in the neighborhood. Yeah, you know, clearly. Special off every year. You know? Yeah. And then, so, you know, I have a theory <clears throat> in terms of, like, really productive soil and then some level of, of timber that meets up next to it. What does ag ground sell for around where you guys are at? Like, is it Could crazy be. price? Crazy town? Oh, grand an acre. Okay. Could be, yeah. And then what about just recreational? Like, just a, yeah. if you just took a square 40 timber track with right mediocre now, timber. Uh, you'd be lucky to get one at five grand. Okay. An acre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. And then, I mean, do you guys have any theories? What, what makes a, what what did what does it take to grow Boone and Crockett typicals? Because that's the like I said, that's that's what everyone wants. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's got to be genetics and it's got to be time. I mean, mm-hmm. those are the two things. You know, I think you know you look at the the deer that was killed in 2013, and you look at this one. It was killed in a same essentially the same riverbed. 
sure. just a, a little bit of distance yeah. from each other. Um, so you have great ad ground, you have wonderful genetics, and then you have a chance for them to put some age. Like, you know, we're guessing this year, we're, we were guessing the Huff Bucket, six and a half. Mm-hmm. We're pretty certain that, you know, our first picture was three and a half. You never know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, age is one thing. And I know everybody talks about four and a half getting a maturity, but you just never know. I mean, he was getting bigger at six and a half and it wasn't even close. Like he was putting on inches at six yeah. and a half. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, I mean, I, you can do the math, but roughly 20 inches. Yeah, mm-hmm. at six and a half. And I mean, that's a special, spectacular, world-class animal. But it is. It is unique how there's pockets of different looking deer. Like the yeah. that Indiana property we have, it produces big typicals every year. Monster six by six typicals. Mm-hmm. And then you run over to our Ohio property and it's got drop time, you know, non-typicals. We killed a three drop off of it this year. Another similar story. Deer shows up last couple of weeks of season every year. Mm-hmm. Pulled that one off, but <laughs> Ohio actually has the late season. Indiana, Indiana, the season's over before the late season really kicks in. But yeah, as a side note, obviously you guys uh, live live whitetails. So does that impact your guys's management strategy? Knowing that you don't really have a a huge like, are you planning late season destination food sources? Knowing that you probably won't get a hold of you know hunt it with effectiveness. Yeah. Well, so Ohio, we plan for late season. Um, plant standing beans, turnips, stuff like that. Uh, Indiana, it's like, give them what they want, you know, early season before mm-hmm. that Indiana rifle season kicks in. Mm-hmm. That's always been our model because we don't have big properties. I mean, 100 acres or less. I don't, mm-hmm. think, I don't think any of them are much over 100 acres. Yeah. So it's not like you're going to be able to hold them year round. You just want to give them the best food source, the best cover, what they want. When you before can that Indiana rifle season kicks in, yeah. So, yeah. Do you got do you guys do you guys rifle hunt Indiana? Or, I, okay. So that used to be my thing is I will never hunt <laughs> Indiana rifle season again because uh-huh. I did it one year and a huge I don't know it was a booner in Ohio walk right in front of the camera in front of the stand I would have been with that wind so I just died. I threw my bow in the truck. I threw my rifle in the truck because we live in Indianapolis. Uh-huh. So I either have to drive an hour and a half to Ohio or an hour and a half to uh, Indiana. And halfway there, I'm like, I'll go rifle in Indiana. Run down there. Murphy's Law. I'm just looking at my looking at my cell cams the whole time, and sure enough, the deer all sitting in Ohio walks right in front of the stand. I'm sitting in Indiana with my rifle. You got too many good spots. Yeah. yeah, I'm not that proud. I'll I'll take the rifle out any damn time. Heck and, yeah, you know. And anymore, I mean, two years ago, my my daughter shot her first year open uh-huh. day gun season. So you know, my kids are starting to get into it. So um, it's a it's a great way to introduce them. So I'm I'm, yeah. I'm still all over that gun season. Heck yeah. Well, and we were talking uh, before we started recording too. You guys kind of have a theory on why maybe this deer traveled so much. So I'll let you guys introduce that thought and what your, your logic was behind it. Why this one traveled that much. Yeah. Uh, I think that this one's more the, just the better. Oh, the area. other, this, so oh, that was the senior, the, uh, junior. Okay. Oh, the bump on his nose. Yeah. So, and I don't know if anybody had any pictures of him the previous years. Mm-hmm. like that far north but if you notice in last year before he was killed mm-hmm. he had big huge like hematoma on his forehead mm-hmm. and i don't know my theory was you know maybe it screwed up his gps his equilibrium or something mm-hmm. and he didn't know where he was going he was a, in a new area or something he mm-hmm. didn't know where his normal um summer and rut area was we know he wasn't on us yeah uh, during those times anyway but did he always go that far every single year i don't know but we knew he wasn't on us yeah summer fall early rut he just came on us like uh you know late 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 season yeah it's almost i don't know how much you guys follow different people's uh content and theories but <clears throat> obviously Higgins, Don Higgins has two theories. Bucks show up about the same time every year. 
which oh, yeah. this deer kind of fits that bucket. But the other thing that he swears by is if they show up during deer season, they should be there in velvet. And so that this deer necessarily, maybe he was in the area, but it didn't necessarily fit that, that theory then. Oh, oh no. I would, we have plenty of deer that show up late rut or post rut mm-hmm. and they're nowhere. We know where they are in velvet. Sure. And they're not, they're yeah. not on the properties during velvet. Yep. And I guess the other thing of that is you're on a, a watershed type terrain feature too, which, I mean, that could obviously change things. So, um, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. So any, I'm, I'm just, uh, it's, it's just crazy because you, you hear these crazy stories and Oh, I saw that. Well, this is the other one you get like, Oh no, I saw that deer way over here. And then everyone's just like, yeah, okay. (laughs) You know, did you have pictures of them? (laughs) It's like, maybe all those people aren't so crazy. Yeah, that's the funny thing, you know. I've I've seen I've read some some of Puff's you know interviews that he's done, and there are some people on there that that are pretty happy to bang on him a little bit. Yeah. About, oh man, that's a fence gear. Oh man, that's this. You know. Um, sometimes you just got to be grateful for for what you're seeing because that deer's a once in a lifetime animal. Yeah. You know, there's there's one small story that I heard, um, you know, in, in sitting around that a guy had the deer in his crosshairs last year. Uh huh. And he was walking out of the stand and he had him at like 180 yards with his, with a high powered deer rifle, but he was offhand. He was with a doe uh-huh. and he didn't feel comfortable pulling the trigger. It might've been greater than 180 yards, um, mm-hmm. but he didn't feel comfortable pulling the trigger. And he said, I'm going to get out. I'm going to get back in here. He's just going to be right there in that, in that little swale with the doe, come back out with the doe. And he's going to come yeah. back out in the evening in an hour or two and I'm going to kill him. And then it never happened. So, I mean, there, there are so many sure. wild stories that when a deer like this comes up from high fence to sure. poached to, and I can honestly tell you, pup killed him legally. I can tell you he was a wild range animal. He was just a freaking spectacular, spectacular. Emphasis on the wild, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wild. Emphasis with, on that. Gosh, with, yeah. With eight and a half miles and just. At least. Just, just a crazy dude. Do you, you think that. Wonder, Go ahead. I was wonder, like, how much of that um, Indiana communal deer drives, you know, people do the same deer drives on the same properties every year. Did mm-hmm. they push them down that way every year? Or, yeah. You know, because it, it doesn't seem like it was just a, it seems like an odd natural movement for that time of year. Yeah. To, to, to not get him on, to not get velvet pictures or see him, um, you know, nothing there. And then, and this, I mean, that Christmas time isn't necessarily, I mean, unless you have some yearlings or deer going back into heat, maybe is the only other thought that I have, but I, I mean, who knows? Who knows? And to not get him killed traveling that far, just. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I counted like the number of individual parcels between there and I just stopped counting at like 30 something. Yeah. It's just so many individual parcels that he would have had to cross to get yeah. down to us so if all those guys are running trail cameras there's 30 the 40 different people yeah that's and i'll be curious to see where things transpire of are, are there more velvet pictures that that do surface is there more of those oh i had them at yada yada yards whether they're factual or not who knows but it begs the question how many times did this deer evade death whether from a hunter or a car for that matter if he's crossing eight oh, paved right. roads we said that so many times you know how many yeah. for three years you know yeah. he's doing that truck for three years yeah so when you guys found out that it was clearly the same deer did that just absolutely blow your mind yes. when you found out where he was killed like it had first, i was i was big a skeptic i was like no way i'm yeah. like he's telling somebody that he shot over here because he wants to protect his property that's right sure. next to us and stuff and then you go talk to dustin yeah he's like you believe him yeah you, you believe his, him his, i mean once he get to lie there, yeah you know his dad's are like hey, yeah it was just we hunted that property for <laughs> you know 30 years you know it's just a little 60 we hunted it for 30 years and it's it's right up the road you know and it's you're just like salt of the earth kind of people. They're not, it's, it's all. Yeah. Now they're to deceive anyone. Yeah. And, and really at this point, what do you have? I mean, he has, like I said, he has to tell that story the rest of his life. So it's like, why would you, you would get no gain out of, of fibbing yeah. over something stupid and small like that. Yeah. Super, super humble dude, like over the top humble, but it mm-hmm. seems like that's just his, and, I, and I've only met him 
once for an hour and a half. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, yeah. It'd so be, good, good to shoot it. That's for sure. Yeah. So when I was reading that story, he thought it was like a 171, like the same thing we kind of talked about, like a 170, 180. And then he went over there. So when he shot it and they drug it out, did, at what point do you think he realized like, holy cow, this might be the biggest typical ever shot in the United States or until people started pulling out he's, tapes. And he's got a story about it where they like rough scored and his buddies came over. I think they were having some pops and they enjoying mm-hmm. themselves, right? Celebration. Yep. And somebody rough scored it. It was over 200 inches. And then, <laughs> you know, the story goes like he posted on Instagram and then he has some buddies that are like, send us a picture on the side, right? Like, yeah. don't put it on your, and, and then they were like, hey, put a lock on that lock, that cooler that you have him hanging in. Don't let anybody close to him. This beer is next level. Yeah, and then I think everything just blew up for for there for him. But I mean, just he, you know, he didn't know what he did, what he had. You know, yeah. probably like a lot of hunters shooting a deer like that. I mean, mm-hmm. um, until you actually put a tape on him, you don't want to believe it, and it looked cartoonish. So. Yeah, yeah. So did you got you guys got some pictures pictures with this deer then, grip and grins? Oh yeah, I jumped or- right in the back <laughs> of his truck. I went over there. And you could see it. <laughs> You know, hey, and I jumped right in the back of their truck. It was with it. I mean, it was just a giant long beer bank, you know, everything about it. And had about a 300 pound animal. And uh-huh. oh, yeah, I, I got quite a few with it. We all got a chance to hold his rat, too. You know, after it was, we took him in and got him cake. We went to the house again, and we're all holding just the horns. It's, and how have just, I've heard rumors it's about nine pounds? Was it like crazy heavy? Like, oh my gosh. It is, it is a very dense, very <laughs> dense, heavy rack. Yeah, yeah, you have some big ones that almost feel hollow. hollow. Mm-hmm. This one was very dense, very dense. Uh huh. I mean, I, so he's he runs up. He's like, "Here, hold it, hold it, hold it." You know, giving it to everybody. You know, passing around. And I'm holding it like with kick gloves, and I see people holding it with one hand, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, dude, you're scaring me!" I'm, I'm, <laughs> Don't I'm drop getting it. anxiety over here. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, 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 throw it around, whatever. I'm, no. <laughs> I'm sitting there having a heart attack. Yeah, I'd have people standing on a mattress. Literally, fun. yeah. White white gloves on. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. We felt like we needed to, you know, yeah. like for us, like that is the holy grail of oh my, you know, of, yeah, of white tail hunting is to try to like to, to to shoot an animal like that. So yeah, when you're actually in that in the presence of a deer that dang big, man, it's special. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is kind of a fun question. Do you think? Will you guys ever sell that farm now, knowing you had the biggest typical on there and, and market it that way? Or is this one you'll you'll always keep? It's gonna be hard. <laughs> Probably keep that one. <laughs> yeah, you almost have to. Anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's and there's plenty of other big deer. You know, you you yeah. you see a bunch. So you know, I I was listening to your podcast about uh, you know how long will it take to uh, what I think you got the vertical yeah. bow buck. Uh, how, yeah. how long will it be able to till we break that one at what two hundred four or two hundred five? Yep. You guys, you guys were taking shots at Illinois and the Dakotas. Yep. Don't sell Indiana short, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I already, I put it into yeah. my tag next year. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And we're no. always shooting out of a two and three year old. Yeah. No, I, you guys have a case there. I mean, um, the number three in the state was in the neighborhood. And then you, I mean, obviously, there's something special about that area. And, you know, it, maybe it's the soil, how productive it is. I mean, there has to be some rhyme or reason to why that is. And to your guys' point, yes, it seems like there's pockets of, of areas where there's big typicals and there's par- pockets where there's big non-typicals. I mean, I've my entire life, I've never had a drop time buck on camera and I run a ton of cameras in a lot of places. <laughs> so, yeah. And then you have other people that get them all the time. It's, that's the, that's the beauty in uh, mystery of whitetails and that's why we're all probably obsessed. if you're listening to this you're probably obsessed with it just like we are yeah obsessed. yeah so and that was the only one in indiana the rest of them in <laughs> illinois <laughs> iowa they must have got nailed during uh, that rifle season there <laughs> yeah they're all dead they're, yeah. all, they're all dead now yeah no point so, coming so wisconsin's really good yeah let's get yeah oh uh, we'll just chaz not on this so we'll say it's ohio that's where you need to be no, not ohio. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's where you guys are at too <laughs> yeah so i mean anything else here i mean it's so cool that you guys uh kind of involuntarily and in, were part of whitetail history forever and you didn't know it until he was dead and and kind of a quite frankly that's how it worked out i mean 
anybody can do it. <laughs> I mean, not that not that anybody can do it, but anybody, anybody can, can have the opportunity, opportunity to do it as yeah. long as you can keep your wits together and the deer might come through your property. Yeah. And they cover, they cover a large, large area. Clearly. Yeah. I think, uh, optimism is, uh, is a good trait to have as a deer hunter, because quite frankly, you, you literally never know. You just never know. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give you guys an opportunity to give any closing statements and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. And I want to say thanks again for hopping on here and share, sharing the story. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, that, like I said, part of, part of whitetail history. And now that I I'm post out of, uh, being, selfish and only focusing on myself during your season it's it's a chance to yeah. save her and realize what happened this past year well i'll i'll just i'll do my little closing as i hope that your listeners didn't find us incredibly boring um, no i will say i will say shout out to dustin hop he is a great yep. dude and yeah. well deserved to shoot that deer and uh and it was just a great three years for us man it was an incredible well, three and a half you know to just to be, um, to be able to say we're chasing that and to hunt a property like we do and the big deer, you know, it's just, it's a passion that we love. Yeah. That's yeah. My, my closing sentiments would be about the same is that dude, that dude deserved to shoot it. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that he shot it. Yeah. So, I mean, someone like that, so open, so, you know, willing to, to show it to everybody and share it mm-hmm. with everybody. Yeah. Couldn't happen to a better dude. And so, he deserved it, and he's a killer. Yeah. All right. Here's two other last questions. So, when do you think Uh-oh. the Mel Johnson buck will be broken, and we're at? You got to give the time. You're part of the bet now. Pick oh, a five year time I'll, frame, and what state? I'll throw it. I'm going to throw it down. I will. I will say it'll be within five years, and it's going to be in uh, your guys's wonderful state of Illinois. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, you, I'm, I think I'm you meant to say Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> no, I'm taking it off. I'm taking it off. Brad's making me nervous over here. You know, he's giving you the stare down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be Illinois. Okay, Central Illinois. Man, you guys That's are beating me up. <laughs> five years. Five years. All right, we'll see. And, and Stan Potts is going to kill it. Stan I love Potts it. Is going to kill it. Hey, anything's possible. We know that now. Yeah, and then uh, now after getting rattled, now I, I don't remember what my second question is. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll call it, we'll call it quits here. And I want to say thank you once again, and really appreciate it. You guys didn't have to do this, and it was fun. And That's I fun. hope I hope people found this found some great. value in it. Yeah, we're we're big deer nuts. Big yeah, deer nuts. <laughs> we love doing it, man. We love watching all your stuff on YouTube too. Like, we love uh, shout out to you, your little whitetail crib, man. Yeah, appreciate we're that. A little cabin, and uh, we we get some tips from watching some of that stuff. And yeah, well, when it's idea. when it's done, uh, let us know, and we can stop by too. Right For on. sure, send us a couple cameras. <laughs> i knew that i knew that was coming right on perfect well thanks guys